watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us on Morning at NTV. It's really a pleasure. We have some really sad news coming in from Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean president, the former Zimbabwean president, Robert Mugabe, has passed away at the age of 95. Mugabe ruled Zimbabwe for 37 years before he was overthrown by his own military. Stay tuned on NTV for more updates. May his soul rest in peace. Moving away from that, it is Friday once again. And for some of you, it is that time when you head to the farm, all right? And to share with us a few pointers into corporate farming, we have Solomon Serwo, a senior agronomist with Bukola Chemical Industries. And he joins us right now in studio. Many thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Okay, so right. we interacted with a few people asked a few questions on social media and the first question was from Idris mm -hmm. and in quotes he asked many corporates employed people many corporates or employed people who own farms do so out of prestige and trying to keep up with the trends not for prudent business purposes true or false um well so somewhat true they, 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 there's a bit of uh, truth in, in the statement mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. to what extent um well, um, as, as you'll appreciate, as uh, corporate people uh, go about their day-to-day -day business, uh, there's also need to have investments somewhere else as uh, part of uh, generating side income. Now, agriculture definitely and lately has proven as uh, one of the industries which can help uh, corporate people, farmers generally, generate income. Um, although there is a risk involved, but the profits also that come with it uh, tend to to attract uh, lots of uh, people into uh, into uh, the business. Mm -hmm. the, the enterprises are also many, uh, from crops, different sorts of crops, mm -hmm. uh, fruits, vegetables, to animal rearing, to bird keeping. Mm -hmm. Now, lately, fish farming and so many other things. So there is a variety of things someone can uh, can choose from. Now, the other advantage that we see that comes with uh, with the agriculture that attracts so many people is it's 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 one of uh, the businesses literally someone can invest in, and uh, th there's less of um, tax taxation, uh -huh. and, and and so the money directly comes to you. In your backyard. Exactly, mm -hmm. somewhere in the backyard, there's a little bit of uh, following up, but doesn't really get or to eat into your profits or something. So, definitely, it's attracting so many people and. Right. Uh, it's, 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 it's where the world is going. So what you're saying is that what um, Idris here was asking about, saying um, that a majority get into it because of prestige status is and not trend. right. At the end of the day, when someone is investing into it, he's getting into it because of the business aspect of it. Yes. Um, the, the, the truth in that, however, is uh, when you get into agriculture, the other time I mentioned it's a hands-on job. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of benefit that comes with you being involved in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to a few people that are doing, for example, goat rearing, and it, it, it feels good to show off to uh -huh. the, the rest of your colleagues that, hey, I have something going on and, you know, my goats. Right. It's, uh, th there's a bit of life it adds on to you mm -hmm. and uh, makes you feel good. That's why at the one uh, famous person on time said, agriculture adds life to you. Okay. Yeah. We didn't know about that aspect, now we know. It does, it, it does <laughs> add life because plants actually consume carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. Mm, so in that aspect, you yes. have more oxygen in your surrounding. Right. So literally, I think that's what they mean. Okay. Now, too, we have something coming in from Jack. In quotes, he's, say, he's saying, I know many successful corporate farmers who own farms, but if you told them to quit their jobs so that they concentrate on farming, they would curse you. Okay, now he's asking. Can corporate farming be just as lucrative as their regular office work? Can one run the two together, or should one only choose one activity? Well, th that's a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an area we've been tackling for quite some time, especially with people that have come to us and trying to inquire here and there how they mm -hmm. go about starting their uh, farming business. And one thing for sure I will tell you uh, straight away is you don't quit your job to get into agriculture right away. That would be a mess. I mean, uh, that's why probably saying it, they, they would curse you. One thing that we can uh, already say is agriculture needs uh, financing, mm. okay? Um, it, it, it also requires patience. 
uh, getting from agriculture requires that you input, wait a bit of time, and then there comes the output. Mm -hmm. So the months that are spread across the farming uh, period require that you get you, you you have to have some money from somewhere, which right. you must always, and. Uh, the formal employment is one such thing that uh, can enable you, you know, uh, uh, do that uh, to to be able to to sustain uh, your farm. So, we we I would I do not uh, wisely uh, advise that anyone quits their their formal employment and right away get into agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, it is true that you can do agriculture successfully. Uh, as agriculture, we, mm. we, we know people uh, elsewhere in the world are 100% employed in agriculture and they're doing very, very Especially well. Especially the uh, rural areas. Exactly, and they're doing really, really well. Mm. Um, for, 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 for corporate farmers, which is a subject, uh, of, uh, subject matter of our mm. discussion today, the idea is start with your job, okay? okay. Uh, get some money and invest into agriculture. Mm. Learn as much as possible in the process of doing the two. Mm -hmm. Such that later on, when uh, probably now, because we know that former employment at the end of the day, the word is retirement. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So as as you retire, you have the experience. You have tried so many things. You have failed somewhere and learned very good lessons. Mm -hmm. When you retire into a farm that is organized, a farm uh, in which you are very knowledgeable, a field where you actually have command. There is nothing as fulfilling as settling down to a farm that has been established over time with all the sorts of troubles that you have you would have experienced before, and and I mean, th th that would be the, the greatest thing that everyone would want to look. Uh, it's not when you know just. Um, jumping onto that explanation that you've just given, um, a majority would say that, hey, and it's good that you've advised us, it's not good to just quit your job and get into agriculture as a beginner. Mm -hmm. First develop it, then once you're comfortable, then you can get into it full time. But when you look at agriculture, it's a huge sector that has, you know, um, a whole value chain to it. And it doesn't mean that if you're saying that I'm in agriculture, the only thing that you can do is be, you know, be a farmer or be, you know, have some, you know, livestock to it. Um, what are these areas that people can look at as possible avenues of generating income, so to speak, or investing for the purposes of businesses in the value chain? Well, that, that's a really rich question. Uh, W when they mention uh, the, the statisticians, uh, when they give it to us that uh, this is so much a big percentage of Ugandans are involved in agriculture, mm. that doesn't mean they're out there with a hoe, or they're out there with feeds, you not know, throwing around for chicken or goats to eat, right. or herding cows around. No, it means basically that they are engaged in any one of the so many value chains. Okay, now uh, with agriculture, it all starts from the knowledge, mm -hmm. the extension. You can get involved in providing the knowledge, either using you as a as as a resource, or getting into ICT, you mm -hmm. know, to develop such things as that can pass on the knowledge, or getting into small institutions that mm -hmm. help bring people together and you know, share information and knowledge and so many other things. Um, along the way, then it come it, it goes to the inputs, uh, to the seed, to the uh, cultural chemicals, to the fertilizers. Uh, th th there is so many people in the country that are into their cultural input businesses, mm -hmm. uh, small shops in different rural areas. It, here in the urban town, when you talk about container village, it's, uh, mm. it's, it's, it's a whole double street of uh, a culture, bi uh, small businesses, you know, running there. And they're all involved in the culture sector. Uh, then uh, th th there is so many things as uh, the equipment, OK, mm -hmm. uh, then in, in, in the same talking about valley canes, you can talk about uh, several other things as the actual farming itself, getting mm. to rear the animals. Uh, then there's marketing, there's transportation, there's advertising, the linkages. Oh, wow. I mean, it's, it's yeah. really huge. You choose where. I mean, I, I, we see so many trucks drive from the west with the uh, full of uh, banana. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people that are driving those trucks are into their culture business. They have identified where the produce is, identified where the market is, and they so are they're linking. offering the yeah. transportation. Exactly. So they, they, are, they, they are offering the transportation, they are making linkages, and along the way they are, they, they are earning. Um, there, there was a time I was uh, interesting a colleague of mine who was into uh, yogurt production. I said, well, th there are too many people are doing yogurt, and yes, you're getting into yogurt. Uh, you, you must do it in such 
a, a, a different way that your product now gets to be uh, identified or recognized mm. onto the market. Mm. What are the other people doing that uh, probably you can look at, do it differently, and then also position mm -hmm. your product differently? Nice. So whichever, even uh, we, we've seen markets, uh, women doing uh, markets, you go to Kalewe, right. you go to Nakasera, and so many other things. Lately, we are seeing people who are saying, look, uh, again, the corporates are too busy to go around some of these markets. So yes. <laughs> how can I just uh, I identify someone who has a need, uh, get their shopping list, right. go pick it up, deliver, and, and then deliver it to, to, to them. So that is also something interesting. And with branding, you, you know, someone delivers a, 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 a bucket of uh, probably potatoes, but branded, mm -hmm. X quality potatoes and right. everyone is looking out for that kind of service. You know, right. that is all into agriculture. So the value chains are huge. It depends on how can you really sit down and critically look at where the gaps are mm. and see where you can play a role and, and probably earn something out of that. Okay, wow. there's an interesting question here from Peter. And he says, it is the start of the planting season. How does one carry it out successfully from far away from their offices without physically being there? Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about corporate farming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, Peter's question is uh, partly what we talked about the other time. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is not really possible uh, to do something without being there. there. That is, a, you need to it's, monitor. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's going to be quite. In hard. this situation, what would he do? So, um, in, in this situation, of course, uh, he has to put aside time mm -hmm. to, to to get there sometime. Because I believe he's speaking from the perspective where you have a job, Ex exactly. which you cannot quit, exactly. but then you also want to get involved uh -huh. in the culture. Now, for, for Peter's case, mm -hmm. we must identify, you see, there are critical times in the farming uh, uh, cycle in, or in the, in, in the season mm -hmm. where uh, you must actually get there. At, 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 at the start, to be able to establish that, well, things are actually in the order that you may want them to move. The, the start determines how you will finish. If you're constructing a house and you don't have a plan, you, you don't want uh, the foundation to come up and then you're like, I, 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 I needed two bedrooms and it's only one and the plan doesn't have that. So you, you never had, had, you you never had adjust, a blueprint to begin. Exactly. You cannot adjust <laughs> later in the future. Okay. So he, 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 he needs to be mm. there at the planning stage and know this is what it's going to be. Uh, we're going to have about two acres and we'll have from here to the other end to the other end. We'll avoid these areas. These areas are problematic. Mm. So as he purchases inputs, he knows where exactly those are going. Mm. And the planting stage, that is very critical. Right. You need to be sure people have actually planted uh, the, the volumes that you want them to plant, the acreage that you want them to plant, uh, and then the monitoring, that one can be, do can, can be done uh, using the well, several avenues, mm -hmm. okay? W once you have structures, you have your farm and has very clear structures, you have the administration, you have people you can rely on to, uh, to, to, to inform you about mm -hmm. a few things, that is very, very critical. Uh, and then, of course, once in a while during the... Uh, uh, periods like those that require weeding, right. harvesting, and mm -hmm. so many other things. So mm -hmm. those are really critical. Now, the the, the the good news I have for him mm -hmm. is that technology is going to help us uh, uh, sort some of these uh, challenges. Okay, you can stay back at home and then you know exactly what is happening to your crop. Mm -hmm. You know exactly whether it's moisture that is going down using sensors and so many other things, getting uh, timely messages, SMSs on your phone and, and reminding you that such and such a thing have to be you know, right. carried out. And, right. you know, and you know nowadays you even have apps that uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> are providing solutions to quite an, a number of challenges. Uh, there's another question coming in from Juma, yes. but I think it's similar to what you've just answered because he's asking what farming choices can one undertake that will not take them away from active corporate work you've already answered that let me get to another question coming in from Hassan he's saying let mr. Solomon advice on one thing that is bothering farmers of late and this one thing is fake pesticides and chemicals what is happening is saying what is happening and what is going on in the marketplace and how can we go about identifying the authentic products from the fake ones Wow, th that's uh, something really unfortunate that uh, as many people are trying to get interested in doing farming and uh, of course the use of inputs is a must, uh, then the challenge uh, that they face is they could buy a counterfeit mm. and once you buy counterfeit you lose the money, you lose the time, you, you, you can actually lose your crop. Right. Uh, it's, it's very important for someone to acknowledge that there is counterfeit. That's a, that's the beginning of it. We have to acknowledge. Exactly. There's, there's counterfeit. Mm. You move out there and then you find uh, counterfeit in the market. 
uh, one of the ways we can try to avoid counterfeit is uh, ensuring that we are sourcing from authentic uh, suppliers or how dealers. Do you, how do you identify authentic dealers? Now, that is also the other question that mm. technology also, uh, also en enables us to, 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 to respond to or answer. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you go to the internet and you're looking for a product, uh, for authentic uh, dealers or authentic suppliers, they've been able to brand themselves to an extent of uh, going to uh, the internet. So when you search around for a product, that comes from a supplier or manufacturer somewhere, you should be able to find it and they'll be able to tell you this is manufactured by so-and-so, supplied by so-and-so, and they'll give you the location or they'll give you telephone numbers. Call them and probably tell them, I mean, this area, they could direct you that in that area we have uh, a dealer X who you can actually trust. Right. Okay. Right. And then the other thing we really encourage, because we as uh, input suppliers in the industry, it, it, it also eats into our business. Mm. So we feel pain mm. when you buy a counterfeit because the next thing is you feel uh, my products are not of the quality that you that, that you desire. Right. Mm. So we encourage that you, one when when you're making a purchase, um, you make sure you get a receipt for it. Okay. Now that receipt, we have been able to help so many people uh, go around and 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 and, and, and have. Uh, either their money refunded or their losses, you know, uh, counted back because we are able to trace where that came from and apprehend culprits uh, through, uh, the, uh, I mean, working with the, the regulators, the Ministry of Agriculture and mm -hmm. Industry and Fisheries. Mm -hmm. But most important is let's track for uh, the uh, re registered mm -hmm. and uh, trusted suppliers within your region. Let's call the suppliers and then ask them and then we see how Understood. As we wrap up, um, you, t you said uh, development of agriculture demands concerted effort from everyone. Now let's take a look at government's part. What, what part are they playing? Now the Maputo Declaration requires government to remit at least 10, between 10 to 12 percent mm -hmm. of the national budget to agriculture, but this has not been heeded to. What can you say about that? Well, I'm, I'm not really an authority to uh, authoritatively make statements around that area. Because but I feel w this is government's position. That you is You talked true. about the supplier, then the driver, then the dealer in the market. Now, this is government's part. Just remit 12% of the national budget to agriculture. It's not being done, meaning government is not supporting our farmers. What more can government do to support? As, as, as a growing economy, I feel... Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many areas where so the government more like needs your call to, to the government. Exactly, mm. where the government needs to concentrate. Mm. Okay, uh, one thing I'm happy about is that uh, we have had an, a, a slight increase in mm. the budget to to agriculture, mm. but also we should acknowledge as we are talking about uh, the different uh, value chains mm. that the government is also trying to uh, probably uh, invest. Okay, in, in, in other areas which are enabling, for right. example, road construction. If you see the road from Barara to Kampala, or the road from uh, the western part, okay, to Kampala, and from, from almost all the other areas, and the markets that are being constructed right. by city authorities and right. BTC, to me that is more of enabling, and that is... Uh, so you feel like government has done enough to support it, farmers? It, it may not have done enough by now, but it has done something to okay. it, okay? Uh, I, I know of several government projects which are helping farmers, for example, access... Uh, mm. uh, in inputs and right, credit, right. Uh, the SEDP project and so many others. Right. So, in, in so we are yet to pray mm -hmm. for a little more support yeah. from them. In 20 seconds, what would something. you want government to do? Certainly to increase the budget mm -hmm. to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to fund the agriculture sector because one of the things that is also uh, we are stra straining with as an input uh, 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 pl player is many farmers are relying to us for the, for the knowledge, which is right, a good thing right. and positive for us. But what happens in the cases where we have farmers who cannot reach us. The extension seems to be a bit lacking, so probably when they get a lot of uh, better funding, okay, we can uh, enhance the extension services. We can have better control for right. uh, for the agriculture sector, the uh, input industry, white power counterfeit, and so many other things. And as I'm afraid, we will have to leave it at that. We are really running out of time. Senior agronomist, Mr. Solomon Sirwo, many thanks for coming yeah. and finding time Thank to you so speak. Much. Great weekend. Thank you. Likewise. Mm. On that note, we come to the end of the show. It's been wonderful having you join us from Monday to Friday. We'll be back here next week, Monday, 6.30 a.m. to 8.55. So make a date. The latest coming in from Zimbabwe. Former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe is dead at the age of 95. He was a president for 37 years. Yes, we shall keep you updated. I'll be coming back with more information at the top. No? at around 1 p.m. on NTV at 1. My name is Romeo Busuku.
Yes, and my name is Malaki Vilo. Dara, do have yourselves a blessed weekend. Stay safe. See you Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.